everyone and welcome. Hello, hello. I'll give it just a few moments so everyone can join us. And while you're joining us and coming on and visiting, we will have um, a special guest today. So very excited. Give you guys a few moments to jump on and I'll be getting our notes together. So this morning we are talking about a continuation of yoga is not a performance, okay? And so we're continuing to talk about this topic. We talked about it last week. We talked about five principles that are holding our students back and holding ourselves back from embodying the practice of yoga. And this week, we are going to be talking about how you're showing up for yourself, which is one of the five points that we talked about last week and that we've been really focused on throughout the course of the week. And in our last episode, we talked about how students were holding themselves back and we talked about how we're not embodying the practice because we're putting up these limitations and these walls, okay? And so we want to apply these takeaways from last week into this week. And speaking about really what are we facing in uncertain times? And our yoga practice is part of giving us that ability to create an expansion and be able to sit with ourself. Hey, Ilya, I see you. And I'm going to be bringing Ily on today. Ily is going to be joining us for this special, special chat on how yoga is not a performance and as well as how we're showing up for ourselves. And so just a quick uh, reiteration of what we talked about last week, and then Ily's going to jump on with some insight. And in our last episode, we talked about, like I said before, the five principles that held us back from embodying the practice. And on top of that, we sometimes start to entertain these thoughts of self-doubt. We tend to entertain the thoughts of self-defeat. And we go down this rabbit hole. And Illy's going to explain to you about this rabbit hole that we tend to get caught up in. And on the surface, what we share on the outside world is one thing. And how we're truly showing up for ourselves is another thing. And we can, we can sit here and post pictures on Instagram and Facebook and, and all the social media sources with smiles for miles and positive quotes to encourage one another. But how are you encouraging yourself? How are you giving yourself that inner power to show up? So instead of projecting on the outside what we want to feel, bringing it back in, and how are we truly feeling and being authentic in that space. So instead of playing one on IG, how are you showing up for yourself? And are you okay with being vulnerable? And Illy's going to talk about vulnerability. As a matter of fact, that's the main point Illy's going to talk about today is being okay with being vulnerable because that is how we show up to our authentic self. Saying, no, I'm not okay and it's okay or I am going through the same thing that you are because we all are going through something at some different type of level of intensity in this particular paradigm that we're living in right now within our own self and within what others are expressing. Everyone's got a different perspective and mindset is everything. And the performance of playing the role and, and being a slave to the identity is part of the story and a limiting <clears throat> notion that is holding our very own nature back from exponential growth. And I'm looking at some notes here because I had a lot to say this morning. And, um, and so I want to ask you, how are you showing up for yourself and why are we caring about what others think? How are we identifying with ourselves, with our true authentic nature? Not the identity that we want to become, not the role that we're playing, but our true self. And that is is where the vulnerability comes into. And that is part of the yoga practice. That is part of how, why yoga is not a performance because yoga is the authentication of a state of being and of unity and unifying that inner spirit, that dwelling of the spirit being within and allowing it to manifest from the unmanifest to the manifest. 
So it goes back to vulnerability, how we are showing up for ourselves. Why are we caring what other people think? So I'd like to introduce Ily Stobel. He's the founder of Humble Wave and one of my spiritual brothers and meditation guides and gurus. He is a local New Orleanian, an artist, a lyrical creator, a musical creator, and an investment intuitive. Ily truly has been touched by the divine spirit. I basically think he is the spirit walking on earth and walks in cosmic consciousness and abundance as a norm. Today, Ily will share his insights on our following discussion topics, which is showing up to be your identity and identifying yourself with the spiritual role versus your human role. And one very key point that Ily mentioned one time when we were talking about finances, and this conversation won't be about finances today, that's another topic, but uncertainty plus life transitions equals exponential growth. So when we understand how mindset shifts go from performance to practical application and um, physiological well-being, we start to see this transformation and then we get to identify ourselves with the authenticity as opposed to the external. So Illy, I'm going to bring you on here. Hey, there's my buddy. How you doing, love? I'm good, I'm well, how are you? I'm doing fine, I'm doing fine. No, you know, early morning. Blessed and highly favored, as always. Always. You look great. Oh, you do too. (laughs) Thank you. Well, welcome. And so, like you heard, we are going to be talking about that uncertainty plus life transitions equals that exponential growth, that vulnerability, right, that we have. And, And I love how you spoke one time when we were hanging out. We were talking about vulnerability and identity and how people tend to identify themselves with who they think they are, as opposed to who they truly are. And so the topic is, of course, yoga is not a performance. And we talked about how yoga is more than just a physical asana practice. So I want to open the floor to you about talking about this uncertainty, talking about mental health and how it equals this wholeness um, and how we begin to explore and embody something so much greater than ourselves when we allow ourselves to tune in to what is truly authentic and tune out from what no longer serves us. The floor is yours. Well, thank you. Thank you. Well, look, you're right. Yoga is not a performance. It's a translation, you know, and that's something that I've learned through mm-hmm. being you and learning from you on how to translate that vulnerable part of myself. You know, the funny thing about uncertainty is, through uncertainty, that's the only way you can find out what is certain. Mm. And then once you realize that, you can face all uncertainty with that certainty. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's that time versus timelessness. Time is something that we, we categorize, we use as a construct to make something certain. But from that comes binds, boundaries, limitations, performances, falsities, you know? Yeah. But from that other aspect, that, that deeper, that depth of uncertainty of timelessness is uncertain. That's the thing about it. It's, it's, it's part of who we are. You know, we're not even entering this life if it's not for the uncertainty. You know, to live a life full of certain, okay. it's, it, it's very, it's very, it just cuts off life in a way that it's, it's not, you're not able to grow fully. You know, like that's, that's the point of like, yeah, can somebody go stay in a monastery? the rest of your life, yeah, and just be in a certain vibration, but just like you know, any spiritual teacher, you have to thrust yourself back into that uncertainty. That's the only way you can distill what is certain from your practice, from your growth, you know, from your healings, <laughs> you know, that's the only way you can actually know if it's something there, you know, and that's one thing that I think we all resonate with, and that's something that we have to be honest with, you know, and that's where the vulnerability comes in. If you're not vulnerable with yourself, how can you translate that vulnerability, which is your power, to the rest of the world? Mm. You know, you have to walk in that. And that's something that, it, it's, it's odd that vulnerability is looked at as a weakness when it's your ultimate strength. <laughs> it's your ultimate strength, and I can attest to that. Because from that comes so many relationships, so many opportunities, so many experiences that, that really allow you to redefine and continue to redefine yourself. Mm-hmm. And that's something that I, I just respect, and that's something I'm thankful for, and that's something that really moves me in a spiritual way that I can't deny. 
Yeah. And I think we all have to go through that. You know, until we surrender to that, how do we actually know who or what we are here to do? Billy, share with us a story about yourself because you are really showing up for yourself because as a baseball player as well, part of your many, many traits that you have, um, and coach, your knees went out. Yep. And I'm gonna take this. <laughs> let's talk about that. Let's talk about how this transformed you and translated your vulnerability to those that you've now been able to inspire through this experience. For two years, it's been one of the most uncertain things I've ever experienced in my life. Mm-hmm. As you, I, I identified with that certain identity. I'm an athlete. I love being active. Mm-hmm. This is who I am. And then it's funny how God, you know, the divine can really show up and say, are you sure? Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. It's funny, uh, the time it happened, I literally got to the top of the steps. And it's symbolic for me. You know, I was just getting to the top of the steps and then... I don't know where I'm like, okay, you know, how is this happening? Like, what, what, what's really going on? You know, like, and in that moment, one thing, like I said, if you know me, I embrace uncertainty because mm-hmm. that's really, that's the only way my soul flows. Mm-hmm. You know, that's the only way that you can actually discover a certain grace. And from that, my knees going out, instead of being, you know, downtrodden by that uncertainty, it brought me to a certain question why you know especially when you know that you move with a certain integrity but why you know and that's why i say like it's funny how we try to get to these spaces it's a saying a certain a certain habit of just mm. being, uh, i'm positive I'm here i'm showing up and god is like but you're not done you know and that's what it's ultimately so i'm so grateful it actually happened because with that, I've learned to walk in the divine within every step. I've learned to walk with God in every step, to find God in those moments where I am weak. You know, and, and it's amazing what has happened in my life over the last couple of years because I played baseball my entire life. I played sports my entire life, but <laughs> the divine has done things that I you know I can do simply from relying on the divine rather than my own certain abilities and gifts and from accepting that uncertainty so many other gifts have come from that soul undeniably mm-hmm. to the point to where I, I, I can be identified and I can touch a new part of my life and share that you know because before yes I'm vulnerable I connect with people very easily that's just part of being in this amazing city of New Orleans you know mm-hmm. where literally if you're not vulnerable you're going to be it's going to send you you know, because I, we just went through a hurricane and people wonder why. Because we embrace the uncertainty. Because from that comes a certain realization, a certain revelation. Mm-hmm. You're no longer attached to things that are, you're certain, uh, I, I live in this house, I, I have this, but what is there is the essence. What is there is the soul. And that's what happened with me. It shook my ego. It shook the remnants of what I thought I was to show me who I really am. And that's what you were describing before I came home. You know, and it's, it's, it's amazing how something so, like, it's seen, it can be seemingly devastating, dark, and, and, and scary, you know, and something that you really have to embrace. But if you're, you're embracing it with God, and if you're embracing it in the spirit, it's going to level you up. Mm-hmm. It's going to take you somewhere that you didn't know you can go, you know? And that's what's so amazing about this just this time period that we're going through in life is the fact that the uncertainty has brought so many gifts out of people, so many revelations of why am I here? Right. You know, because if you don't have that shaking up, how do you know? Mm, you hit such a good point right there with that. You know, that shaking up part is part of that life's uncertainty. And it's also part of life's cosmic connection to our growth. And I think if everything was just peaches and cream and rainbows and unicorns, we wouldn't really be evolving. And you said one thing so amazing one time when we hung out and it was, if it's not progressive, it doesn't have any space in my life. Along those terms, not exactly those words. You said it so much more eloquently than I did. And, um, but you really did say something so powerful. And it's, and even when we're watching, like there's a movie called eat, pray, love. 
and where Katoot tells the girl, um, Julia Roberts, and the, the character she plays, she, he tells her, from great ruin comes great strength. From great ruin comes great strength. And if we take a look at New Orleans, from Katrina on, from great ruin comes great strength. And I think New Orleans is probably one of the strongest cities in the world and one of the most resilient cities in the world. And you either love it or you hate it. But when you're here, and I'm getting chills talking about it, she, and I give her a she, you know, she is the manifest of the mother. And she brings those spirit dwellers from those that need the transformation, from those that have been transformed, and she shoots them out. And she shoots them out so you can go continue to spread the message. And even those that have left from Katrina, those that have come back, that have stayed here, that came now for Ida, and that have stayed here, I have been, and then they have become and manifested this resilience. They've noticed that that uncertainty plus that life transition equals the exponential growth. And so I would like to hear more about what your take is on the exponential growth once we start to embrace the uncertainty and the life transitions. Well, you know what's funny about the entire Katrina situation is that people always talk about the resilience or the the coming back, but don't think about the spreading about that really came from that. You're talking about one of the most soulful, most literally underestimated, like you say, but resilient because it's soul. It's it's just spirit. It's it's a communal space. You can call it a city, but it's an entity. Mm-hmm. It's something that you live within. It's such an unconditional space. And that's what literally you, you realize about Nola as a mother. Unconditional love is powerful. Yeah. Unconditional love will literally support you, but it will also correct you. Mm. <laughs> You know, and I, I think that's what we get really misunderstood about the divine and just how God operates. You yeah. Know? It's the fact that it corrects. It corrects as needed because if you don't get correction, you literally go to your own demise. Mm-hmm. You think that you go through devastation, but you're still here. The fact that you're still here means that you're, you, you have an opportunity to grow. You know, you have an opportunity to take something that's uncertain and bring a certain energy other places and that's what happened with me and so many other people you know we don't think about that you carry nuance within you carry nuance is just synonymous with spirit and soul it's so true you know and that's what it, it boggles our mind because it's so funny over the last week how many of my friends and i call them angels because you are if you can sustain yourself here you're you're different <laughs> whether you're raised here whether you, you're brought here by that very intuitive call so true but, Happenstance of coming in thinking that you're going to do one thing. I told you, unconditional love will shake you to your core. Because mm-hmm. it, it doesn't want you to be false. It doesn't want you to be anything besides what you're really here to be. You know, and if you accept that, then your entire life can shift. And that's what the exponential growth comes because now that you accept that unconditional love, that unconditional presence, that grace is so powerful that it will take you to levels that you didn't even know were there for you to go into. Oh, that's my favorite line that you say. You know, my like, favorite quote. You're so right. Because it is. You're leveling up on ways you didn't know you had to. Every time I say <laughs> the chills. But it's like, how do you go forward in life if you're not, you know, if you don't have that realization? How? How can you really understand what this is really for? Exactly. And what you have to offer. If you don't know what you are, it's so hard to translate yourself in this life. And that's what literally gets so crazy about the social media and Everything is that if you're not real in yourself, vulnerable with yourself, what are you translating? What mm-hmm. are you really presenting to the world? What are you presenting? Yeah. Are you writing your story in soul? Are you illustrating and letting it be authored by the divine? Are you just really just, I don't know, writing it in council? This is an amazing journaling topic because a lot of times, like you said, you know, we're, it's not, social media can really, you can get lost in the sauce. You get lost in all the comparisons. You get lost, and then you start to create something called self-doubt. And then you start to go into this story. And that story doesn't, it's not your story anymore. Now you're creating a story that may have belonged to somebody else, and you're infusing it into yours, and then you're putting that and projecting that as opposed to accepting it and even speaking on that, really showing up for that space within yourself and talking about, you know, maybe I'm feeling a little self-defeated today. And why is that? You know, it's okay to go through these waves. And, you know, as the owner of the humble wave, 
that you are, you know, you speak a lot about the swells of the waves. And one thing I learned is that a wave needs the power of the entire ocean to grow into the biggest wave or the smallest wave, but either way, it needs the, all the water around it to create the wave. And so talk about how we find these waves, how they ascend and descend and how we begin to embody this space bigger than ourselves. Because even a surfer, when they're surfing, they fall off of the wave and like, whatever, man, we just get back on and do it again. Right. So let's talk about that. Well, see, when you say surfing, that's what I look at is you're, you're riding the waves of grace without embodying the wave itself. And I look at the ocean as literally wholeness. You know, it doesn't matter if you just stepped in it or you're, you're in the very depths of it. Because guess what? At the, at the deepest part of the ocean is dark. Mm. You know, at that moment, guess what? In darkness, that's the funny part about darkness is that you can literally submerge yourself in darkness and awareness of the light. Yeah. And that's the realization. That's why when you really take yourself to that space and you close your eyes and you allow yourself to go to the depths of that, there's a, a, a unmistakable, undoubtable, like, wholeness that you will discover. Yeah. Because you're buoyant in that space. Yeah. You know, or you, you're really, you're just always discovering yourself more in that space. No matter, like you say, without trial, there's no triumph. How would you know how to triumph if there's no triumph? Mm. And it's funny, you talk about the validation point about social media, and we all go through this. It's because you, you want a certain result. Right. You right. want the result until, like I said, if you can't be uncertain on there, it's better to just stay away. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because that's not you being you. Yeah. And that, we're all fall victim to it. And we do that in life. We do that in partnerships, relationships, everything. You know? And I'm just blessed to have certain individuals that reflect that hope, that reflect how deep we really are in the ocean and not afraid to tread that, you know, and to be that. It's not about treading the water. It's about actually letting yourself dissolve in that water. And then you start to move as the whole ocean. The humble wave literally knows it's that whole ocean. That's the key. There's no separation. Amen to that, for sure. You know, that's a different movement. That's a different confidence. That's a different clarity. That's a, you show up different. You know, you overcome differently. You know, you don't question the divine. You don't question what's happening in your life. You embrace it. Because undoubtedly it's happening for a specific reason. Yeah. And it's for you to discover every every point that's supposed to be made in that. Because it's there, you know, and that's funny, like, especially like the knee situation. It's, it, there's days that my spirit is willing, you know, my spirit is really strong. And my body's like, hey, hey. How are we going to do this? And I'm like, we're going to do this, you know? Like, we're going to figure it out. <laughs> there's a, there's a, there's a yeah. different strength that comes from submerging yourself into the divine and letting God move. There's a different, the healing is different. The process is different. There's no timetable on a timeless heal. Mm. Some of us, it goes the duration of our life. Some of us, it's, it's a season. Some of us, it's an interaction. Some of us, it's a, it's a pitfall that we think we can't get out of, which you have to fill that space. And to fill that space, sometimes it takes for us to break down. Sometimes it takes for us to shatter what we thought we had to be in that moment. You know, and that's why I think we also don't get certain results from certain things. Like if you come on here and you're trying to be something and you're trying to figure out why it's not working unless you manipulate it, you know, and that's the problem. We, there's nothing in this life you have to manipulate. Absolutely nothing. You know, and if you don't, if you don't accept that, you're going to go your entire life trying to manipulate life. When life is just trying to mold you into something that you have yet to discover. <laughs> it's a different form of manipulation. It's like it's, it is, manipulating it's, it like a mold of clay. Creativity. It's just yeah. creativity. You know, it's, it's not, it's not you trying to take the will of life and trying to just make it do something. It's you're working with. And that's yeah. what I'm talking Submerging yourself into that ocean. You can be the crest, you can be the trough, you can be the undertones. It happens. You know, like that's the part about the wave. That's the part about being the wave. That's the part about embracing the fact that you are this vastness and accepting it. I love this point, and I want to stop you there because you bring up something really powerful. 
I also want to invite anyone and everyone to share share and and and, and join Ily and I for meditation. Uh, we'll do a meditation after the at the end of this at the end of this um, show. But I also want to invite you to follow him because he also does incredible meditations as well and posts a lot of really insightful information that will help you help yourself. And something else that will help you is we, I am a practitioner of the transcendental meditation practice. I do TM uh, twice a day uh, for 20 minutes each day. And I will post that here in the comments below tm.org.org. So you can go there and also learn about this. And the reason why I bring up TM is because transcendental meditation utilizes the same exact analogy that Illy uses with the ocean. And so we, we talk about something known as the ocean of consciousness, the ocean of consciousness. And I know Juice, Juice John um, point two one eight nine mentioned facts, right? And he is so, or she, he, they are so spot on because those are the facts. The facts are that the ocean of consciousness is unbounded. It is unbounded. And it is so vast that when you do sit in meditation, you are sitting in the space where in your mind, physiologically, in your mind, you transcend down to the depths, all the way down to the depths of the seed of your source, to the darkness of the ocean. And what we call this the pure, unified field of consciousness. This is the seed that is unchanging. Like when you're sleeping and you don't even know what's going on around you, you don't even know if you got like a spider on your hand or whatever. Like you're out, you're out cold. Nothing matters, right? You don't feel nothing. It is what it is. And it is just that I am that, that I am. And so you are all of those things. You're unbounded, right? You're unbounded. There is no connection to nothing else. You are so transcended in these altered states of consciousness that, that nothing else matters. But in your transcendental meditation, in your meditation, it's an awakened state of enlightening yourself. And don't be afraid of enlightenment because we all are already there. All right. And that's another topic for another day. But when we are in this pure being, the darkness, the darkness that Ely talks about, and I love this, the awareness is the light. The awareness is the light. And the awareness that we're cultivating and we're culturing through transcendental meditation, through transcending, is that connection to the highest self, to Ananda, Ananda Mayakosha, to the bliss consciousness, to the bliss body. And that wave now is formed and comes to the surface level from the unmanifest that we come into the pure, dark, 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 dark space, the ocean floor and beyond that. And that itty bitty tiny ripple of maybe a plankton that wiggled on the bottom or that little animal that's under the sand wiggles. And all of a sudden there's a tiny ripple, right? And then that little ripple starts to merge up. And it starts to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And it ends up becoming on the surface. Once it gets on the surface, it is now the manifest form. Each time we dive in to the ocean, we emerge different. It's a baptism almost in a way. We die to the self, to the old self, to the purification so that we can be renewed. And I know that Illy mentions this a lot when he talks about cleaning the slate so we clear the slate, and that's part of that wave. It's clearing the slate. And even if you think about your coherence and the brain waves are waves, right? They're waves of energy. The coherence by meditating in a group of people. Why do people love going to a yoga class versus doing it online? Because you're surrounded by your energetic best friends, even if you don't know them, right? You don't know who they are, but you know you're going through something and they're going through it too, right? Energetic best friends, waves of energy. And I think... This is a beautiful time to connect with that transcendent space. Flexibility is not something that is attained only through yoga. Yeah, sure, you're going to get flexible if you practice it all the time. But also take that word deeper. Flexibility within yourself. How are you being flexible with yourself? How is that enabling you to show up for yourself now that you are hearing what you're hearing and learning what you're learning? You're being able to now take all of this information to transcend and translate what it is you are now receiving energetically. Illy, talk about that soulful communal space. 
that soulful communal space is it's funny that you talk about I am. Like you know we had this conversation before and prior. Mm-hmm. Um when you can honestly say within I am because within I am at the very basis of your being and your search and your 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 asking then you can really rise from that in that space with others. And like you say, it's, it's energetic, it's soulful, it's communal. It's something that's shared with all of us because we all are, and we all know I am until we, we, until we rise up as the wave of whatever we choose to be, we are, you know, and sometimes we don't even realize how simple that realization is. And yoga does that. Meditation does that. Um, our individual lives do that. Our collective lives do that. And sometimes the, it gets distorted by what we perceive to be beyond. I am this, I am that, you are this, you are that. And that's the beauty of literally not only just yoga, but that translation into life. You know, it's like to show up as your purest form wherever you go and then to become whatever unique presence you are desiring or need to be. Yes. And that's the point of literally, like, I, I'm so grateful for just meeting you, learning this. And it's, it's with everybody, to be honest. You know, it's, it's, with, it's with everybody. And I, I choose to live in that way because I, I see life as my communal space. You know, we practice on a mat. We sit on a, a chair, <laughs> a, a, a meditation pillow. But eventually, we have to take that I am with us wherever we go. And we have to see that within everybody. Because if you're not seeing that wherever you go, then have you really seen it? Have you really felt it? Have you really acknowledged what that base layer is? Mm-hmm. That It allows you to connect, not only with yourself, vulnerably, but others, and accept and understand where people are coming from. Yes. You know, that's, that's one thing that we don't do. We don't choose to understand. You know, and I feel like if you don't give life understanding, then you're, going to, you're just going to catch yourself out of clarity, you know, you're going to miss the signs and messages, uh, the revelations and the story that's actually been written for you and everybody else around you. It's like we're trying to look through blinders. We're trying to look through blinders. Mm -hmm. So when you're carrying something and then you're trying to literally be a presence of, it's hard to juggle that. It's hard to balance that. It's hard to it's hard to really just progress like that. Yeah. We make it a lot harder than what it has to be. And okay. yoga literally allows us to bring inspiration to resistance. You know, that's, you're not telling yourself you're anything when you're doing yoga. That's the whole point. You're not telling yourself you're anything when you're doing meditation, because that's the point. Yeah. But it should never be the same thing with you living life. You know, it's the wholeness that you talked about. At, it's the wholeness. That, you know, and there's no part of you that's not whole wherever you go, no matter what physical happening may come, you're still a whole soul, <laughs> you know, and you got to embrace that. Mm-hmm. And you should want to explore that because that, that's really the gift of this entire life is exploring this wholeness of a soul in this human form, in these human relationships, in these human circumstances, in this human happening, in, in this human projection on okay i want to create a better what you know because you can't create a better soul the soul is already pure it's already untainted but this life has so many distortions this life has so many um ups and downs ebbs and flows and you can be the balance and force of that that's the funny thing about like having a certain collective around you are just meeting souls upon your journey that do resonate you know, I have friends that I, I barely talk to, you know, but it's almost like we never are separate. You know, it's, it's very mature. It's very, it's very understood. And it's not even talked about half the time because there's just a natural vulnerability there that just allows you to communicate and translate in a different form. You know, and I think that's just all apart from reading life and literally it's written. It's being written as we speak, as we live, as we go through it. Are you reading the lines? Are you breaking down the words? Are you understanding the sentences and the spaces between that give everything purpose? You know, that's that's what I'm talking about, the base layer of I am before you say anything. You know, 
you are before anything. That pure wholeness of, oh, this makes sense now. Yes. When you're in the middle of a sentence, are you the characters coming together to make that word? It's so hard, and you get lost in the illustration of that very character. Well, it goes back to identifying with the character as opposed to identifying with that vulnerable part of the self with a capital S. Yep. You know, and not so much the little S, <laughs> not the little self, little self, but the big self, so, the greater than, that wholeness the that whole embodies everything. The self that you can see in others. You know, there is no performance here because, you know, even performers have to practice. And when they practice, they have to tune in to that vulnerable space within themselves so that they can be the best performer out there. You know, Angelina Jolie, Johnny Depp, all these actors out there that are super good, they embody the character as a whole. When you think about these really good actors out there, you think about movies, I mean, sometimes you almost can't really separate them from those characters because they've embraced it so much. Like when I think of Johnny Depp, I think of Captain Jack Sparrow, you know, like, or Edward Scissorhands. Like I, you know, I, you know, like I think of like, a, you know, he, a, 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 a character that has become a manifest on the unmanifest to the manifest. They embody something, but they also know to separate themselves from the character and the human self. It's like separating the yoga practice from the person. You know, you may not like a yoga teacher. That might not be your favorite yoga teacher. And we'll talk about that in another video another time. But finding the right teacher, you know, we don't always resonate with certain teachers. You know, you and I are not everybody's cup of tea. But yet, we're each other's cup of tea. You know, we like each other's flavors. And people that like our flavor are going to respond to our flavors, right? They're going to respond to what we have to say. And we may be saying something that somebody else may be saying exactly the same way. But it's a different being that they resonate with, right? And so... Being able to be okay with knowing what you resonate with and knowing that these are not performances. This is the this is the vulnerable side of ourselves showing up for who we truly are. And that's really a big part of showing up for yourself is being okay with, again, taking uncertainty and life transitions and looking at this exponential growth that is the wholeness. Yoga is the unifying of the mind and the body right is the mind the body and the spirit coming together in a whole as one we might practice the physical asana but the physical asana and the pranayama and all of the above prepares the body to enter into the transcendent state of samadhi or ananda which is the bliss consciousness or transcendental meditation and so as we come towards an end for today's beautiful, lovely talk, let's talk about really shifting the ego. Tell me about how we, how you were able to do that when your knees went out on that, that game that you knocked it out of the park. And then all of a sudden can't do it again. It's funny. Cause as, as like severe as that situation was, there's a series of events prior to that that were more pivotal than that. Because at those points, I was more so, I was more so Murphy was talking about uh, uh, actors and embodiment, and then they make you believe. Um, we do that with ourselves, you know. We do that with the certain roles that we play, and we start to believe rather than the essence that's actually giving that role a purpose, you know. And the thing about drama is, you can either be uh, completely guided by the play, or you can be a soul at play. And those are two different places, you know? And for me, it's so funny, uh, the, the knee situation, it just allowed me, as if I wasn't doing it before, the remnants of whatever was holding on, that role that I thought I had to play, I just replaced it with really letting my soul play, letting my soul be, letting my soul just, competition is non-existent. <laughs> You know, like that's a role we play that, you know, because within competition comes boundaries and limitations and mm. certain rules that don't even apply to your essence or your soul. Um, and well, and also competition like a, leads to comparison. It leads to oh, self-doubt, okay. you know, the story again, the building up the stories. 
Yeah. You're picking yourself again. And that's what has always thrown people off. Like, I've coached baseball for a couple of years as well. And, like, even with my own team and some of my, uh, you know, my coach counterparts, they'd be like, how are you so open to the competition? Because I'm like, I don't see competition. I see opportunity. I see, I see everybody on a path. I don't care if we're playing this game that's get intense. It don't matter. Because the whole thing that literally makes us all want to be there is the passion. Mm-hmm. You know, the whole thing about, you know, yoga practice is the passion that you, we all love that exaltation, that, that the release, that, that undeniable healing, you know, it's with every medium, you know, even with an actor, because we've also seen actors who play that role so well that they don't know how to escape that, you know, and I feel like we see that so much just in general in life where people can play such a good role in something. And we love them playing that role so much that they don't know how to leave that role. And it's not Or we don't let them leave that role. We don't let them leave that role. We identify them as that. Exactly, because once they leave that role and be themselves. And we do. Honest, it's so funny on this path. That's why I told you. That was just, the new situation was such a, a deep personal happening that I was already moving that way. It just allowed me to really just completely embrace a new chapter of my life Mm -hmm. you know and like you say it's so funny how somebody can be in a role and you'll see them playing the role well and you see them struggling but you enjoy the drama like i said it's so weird how like it all goes back to uncertainty uncertainty because if you if you we don't like uncertainty in our life but we'll go to a movie and watch the uncertainty feed off uncertainty and have people play that role and enjoy that uncertainty but you don't see the equipment you know you don't understand that okay how am i doing this in my own life you know am i playing a role right now and this is why it's such an important thing to have that daily check-in and like i said my knee situation just made me really conscious of not just my daily check-ins but walking each step consciously with that that can sustain me that can you know, get me through things that I would have never been. I played two seasons with that, <laughs> you know, and miraculously, my last at bat, which was on a hot New Orleans summer day, 107 degree index. Oh. And I'm feeling like, oh man, this is definitely it for me. Like, then I'm stepping into the next chapter. This is crazy. And somehow I, I hit a home run, and it's just like, it's symbolic. It's so symbolic because at that time, I'm like literally tired. I'm, I'm, I'm like, how am I even doing this? And it's so funny. Like I said, that role, it just, it died off in, in such a beautiful way. You know, I, it just unfolded into a whole other chapter, you know? And you can't doubt when things happen in that way. And it happens to all of us. We're all hitting this, you know, last home run in our chapters that we are meant to walk out of and into new chapters and unfold that. But you have to accept that there are people around you that will be like, yo, what happened to the role that you was playing? It's like, uh, the motion picture's over. Like, you know what I'm saying? The drama's over. Like, that's not the <laughs> The motion picture is over. <laughs> you know, like, it's, it's just something that we all have to come to. And, you know, like you said, with this coming to a close, it's like, do you realize how fast you really are as an individual and then as a collective, how fast we are? Because as an individual, if you come to realize how unique and how universal you are, what does that say about this entire planet and everybody that's literally a part of this planet? You know, everybody that's part of this. Like, we've talked about it before, and I be the whole point of the meditation is your body. You know, your breath is capable of literally reaching the depths of this earth, but yet... Again, you can take that same breath and intention and send it to the farthest expanse of the universe. And that's who you are. And then from that, you can sculpt so many things of who you want to be. And you have to accept, like I said, some roles you won't play no more. And that's okay. You know, because why would you want to stay in the same? Have you seen a movie that's repeated over a hundred times? It's like... Groundhog Day. Like, Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, we'd be wanting actors to come back over and over like, Come on, come back for the 13 years. It's like, wait, you know, that person has grown. You know, that person has evolved. There's personal things going on. Just And it's so, like, odd and synonymous how movies and life can literally... That's why we see all the parallels within it. Because we want a certain character to show up. Yet, you don't know in that person's vulnerable, real, individual life, 
there's lessons and happenings and trials and triumphs that's going on that are them and making them, assisting them, healing them to be a more authentic version of themselves. Mm. Mm-hmm. You know? And so like want to be, you know, in the undertow of the drama, or do you want to be on the crest of the drama play? Because ultimately, if you really know what you are, then this life becomes completely different. Like I told you, your trials are different. Your, your circumstances are different. You know, all the things that we endure and we witness, trust me, as we are looking at it now, we're witnessing so much shift across this plane. But we're also seeing so much growth, so much, so much undeniable happening. Like, to see my city go through another situation like it did last week and the week prior, you know what I'm saying? It's just like, you start to realize what's really important and mm-hmm. you've come together when she was just going awry, mm-hmm. you know? Cause we don't do the play, you know? Like yeah. life don't let you do it down here. <laughs> you know, like you can get attached and start to do certain things, but it will literally make you- You, you just hit the key up. point. You just hit a key point. And that was the next point I wanted to bring up before we jump into our meditation. And that was attachment. Um, Attachment is something that I feel lends itself back to the role. We attach ourselves to a role. We attach ourselves to an identity. And when we attach ourselves to an identity, how are we ever going to evolve? How are we ever going to be able to manifest ourselves from the minute, minute, finite to the infinite when we're still stuck on, on a role that we're playing versus who we truly are? Well, to be real, identity is not the problem. It's what you choose to identify with. You know what I'm saying? If you choose to identify with roles that are made in time, guess what? You're subject to that. You're subject to the rules. You're subject to the limitations of that. But when you live by that, which is timeless, your identity is different. The way you you express yourself is different. The way you connect is different. So identity is not the problem. Just like I said, I am is it, it's the purest identity of all, you know? But do you identify with that before going into whatever roles or things you choose to do? And those can elevate those happenings. And I think if people understood when you show up into life vulnerable as who you really are, you elevate every round and medium that you choose to encounter. Yeah. All of it. You know? And that's when life becomes the practice. That's when life literally evolves into the yoga. That's when life turns into the walk meditation the thrill for meditation and just being those days where you won't even have to because you'll wake up in it because you know but you have to literally let all that be open you have to literally sit there and realize wow i identify with my time to self mm. you know you don't disregard what happens in this world you don't disregard the situations that oh, i'm a human yes yeah, it's, it's a construct of this yeah but ultimately, it's being propelled by something that's beyond it. Identify with that and see how that grace flows. You know, mm-hmm. see how that healing happens, how that prayer goes. <laughs> you know, it's different. Right. And I think that's the whole point is if you want to experience exponential growth, you have to accept uncertainty. You have to accept transitions. Because if you don't transit, how do you elevate? Mm-hmm. Well, if you're not vulnerable, how do you really translate? Yeah, in order to be in order to be able to be truly authentic, you need to be somewhat vulnerable. Share that part of yourself, you know, that relates with other people. <laughs> Everybody's going through the same stuff, like, you know, just on different levels. And I think it's really important that we come together and not in a there's no competition. You know, you bring up such a valid point. One time someone said, Oh, I'm going to this yoga class at the chop yard. Like it's your competitors. And I was like, walk, 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 walk. I was like, what competitors? Those are my friends. As a matter of fact, like we are, we are totally a co-collective. Like we co-create together in this community. Like this is what it's all about. There's no such thing as competition unless you create competition. This is a coming together. We all have different roles. We all have different things. Like I'm a yoga teacher. I'm a yoga educator. I teach teachers. I teach others that want to evolve and, and go into higher states of their practice of yoga and their evolution through teacher trainings and Ayurveda. And that's where my destiny and my evolution has taken me. But there are people that stick to teaching certain types of uh, students or certain types of practices, et cetera. And that's 
that's what they teach. They're not competing. As a matter of fact, each of us are designed, whether you make jewelry, whether you make knives, like my friend Jade does, like, whether you're, you know, where you, where you, you, whether it's whatever it is that you do, you know, you are being utilized for something quite incredible. And only you were given that gift to do that. So there's no comparison to your gift. There's no, there's no such thing as being excluded because no matter where you are, you are included. It's part of your inclusivity. It's part of showing up for yourself. It's part of recognizing that social media and external circumstances do not dictate or determine who you truly are within yourself, capital S. So like, you know, it's not about, it's not about sitting there and thinking back to those five principles from last week, you know, of fear and be not feeling included or not being able to show up for yourself. Like you show up for yourself when you step, the moment you step into that mat and the moment you step into that space that you're going to do something that you're going to share with others, you are here to educate, implement and, in, and, and, and inform whatever it is that you were gifted, what you were blessed, what you're channeling to do. And that uncertainty will equal the life transformation, which will therefore in equal the exponential growth. And you will see that you are part of this ocean of consciousness. You are part of the ocean of being. A drop of the ocean, a drop has everything that the entire ocean has. And when it's done, guess what? That drop goes right back into the ocean. You can't tell the difference between a drop in the ocean, can you? You can't tell the difference between a grain of sand. And the whole entire body of sand, because together, they the ocean, you want the sand, you want the birds, you want the clouds, you want everything, you want the people, you want it all. And when you have it all like that, you are in Amen. abundance, you are I am. There is no putting a wall up for that. You show up, you show up at the beach with all your stuff, you show up in wholeness. And that is the transformation, the translation, and the juxtaposition of the innate, unmanifest, to the manifest. That's why there's no such thing as a performance in yoga. If you're doing a performance in yoga, then you know what? I I love watching you on the acrobats. I think it's amazing. But yoga is not a performance. It is part of the translation of transformation of the manifest body from the unmanifest being. <laughs> And I love this conversation. Yeah, there's no conversation. Let's meditate. Anyway, that, that's, that's completely contradictory. <laughs> they right. It's contradicting, like I said, everything it's contradicting the entire it's essence of yoga. If you really know and you go, you don't let it get shrouded by that role and you see the deeper essence of it, even competition itself is just collaboration. You know? Um, but yeah, let's definitely get into this. Absolutely. Um, it's just like I said. So y'all, thank you so much. <laughs> I'm gonna just, I'm just gonna make a quick.